I'm Kalina and we'll be talking about lab on a chip. And with viruses like the coronavirus, we want to be able to quickly diagnose and move on to the next step. Too much time is wasted on waiting for results and by then the disease has or the virus has set in and it's already taken over half with lab on a chip microfluid devices. We can we can go to the hospital and still wait in these slides and sit in the office waiting for these results. We can quickly while in the patient room, we can quickly just like blood testing and for diabetes, we can draw blood, put put in that little port, and it can analyze it in a couple of minutes and we can have a diagnosis within ten minutes and Point of care, healthcare should be that simple. It should not be complex. The it the advantages it reduces the patient's wait time, and you can do it from your house, home, like almost almost at the bathroom of a restaurant. To be honest, it's is that simple. It's portable. And the, the vast majority of materials available today for development, silicon, glass, and polymers, you can, depend on what, on what needs to be done, you can, you can modify your device and you can go in the lab and you can have a device ready in hours, in hours. Think about hours. That's amazing. So, in this diagram right here, uh, this, we have this, which is nice. We have the the person's finger and the blood going into the in, in input access port, and when the blood goes in, it travels through microfluid channels. These microfluid channels can sort. And divide, and they can amplify the DNA, which makes it more to simple. And it will go in, and when it has it goes in, it will come through, and it will take a reading. And when these readings are taken, then it can be. It give us an output, and the output would let us know what diseases we have, or if we. You can microfluid devices have been used in breast cancer testing. It has been used in The majority of diseases out there today and viruses, point of care and testing is where it's at. We can, it can help decrease lines and the cost of fabricating devices are not that much. The, the best things about microfluid devices is that it only requires a small amount, just like um, taking uh, your testing for your, the your testing your blood in a diabetic monitoring system. Once you have that little small blood, it can go in there and it can it runs through, and that's a a bench. And you can have a reading within ten minutes or an hour, as opposed to waiting, going to the doctor, waiting in line, then going to another room for testing, getting your blood drawn, going home. They wait three days, or sometimes even a week, to find out. My, the the properties of microfluid devices and chips, they can be based on what your desire, what you want to test. You can design the device in such a way using these different properties allow us to 
allowed the DNA to be traveled and amplified. The silicon and glass are the top used. It's most likely used used for fabricating devices next to hydrogels and papers have recently incre uses has increased. These properties make it easier to define what we want to do with the how, how we want it to function, how we want it to work. What problems do we have? These materials are when in designing these materials are what you will use are what is used to desire, to get our desired microfluid channel or flow of mass. How you design it is important. Microfluid fabrication. To design a microfluid device, first you have a, your substrate material. Your substrate material could be glass, silicon, any of this in this previous slide, it could be a paper, hydrogel based, elastometer, and so in this particular setup, we have where you, our substrate is a silicon wafer. Silicon wafer. The silicon wafer is first it's cleaned in the in a clean room. Then we take and put some photoresist on top of it. Then we take and expose that photoresist by applying a mass, a photo mass. The photo, a photo mass is easily designed in any vector, vector system. Like you can use como, comosol. Some people use comosol. You can use it in. There's a vast majority of ways you can use it. It just has to be a vector picture program. Then that this purple parallel swiggly lines are just the light rays that come from the photolithography. And this silicon wafer is exposed is exposed to that. The photo mask prints the design. The design is based on how you want your microfluid channels to be, the, the dimensions, the size, will all be in, in that photo mass and it will print that layer that design. So think, it's kind of like a layer. You'll layer that design on the photo mass on the silicon wafer. Then you, you're going to develop, to develop a, this wa wafer that has been photo resist, this way for you use of MF319 and you you will spray that on top of the you will essentially put it down in a solution and it will etch away the channels and after you etch it away you will check you will place it under a microscope and you want to make sure that you don't have any defects the defects can, the, any defects in your design can hurt testing and the quality of your device. Sometimes you have to redo it and you may have to start from, from the top all the way back from your substrate material. Then you'll, you'll make a PDS, your PDMS. Your PDMS is essentially taking silicone elastomer, 28 grams or so, and you will take a little plastic dish and you will put your silicone elastomer in that dish. And then you would take about four grams or depending on how many grams you, your particular, particular design needs, and you'll put it in a curing agent mixture. Then you would take and cure it and peel it off. Our last stage, we will have on the left here, where you see glass, is your access ports. Your access ports is where the 
DNA. So where the blood sample or any bio sample, any sample, will be taken and go through the access port and it will run through the device. And it will come out. So microfluid devices have an import and an output. Out port. So it'll come in. Think about what must what goes in must come out. So when it goes in, it'll run through the micro channels. The micro channels that were done and that were fabricated using the photo mass. And you will take in it will these two and this this picture, they're the ports are the two parallel structures. The first the one on the left here is the input. So that's where the DNA sample would go into. And on the right is where it will come out. And microfluid devices have have a weight system. And after that after the silicon wafer is cured and pured, pulled off peered off, then it'll be bonded onto a glass slide. This glass slide usually is a um, microscope, microscope slide. We can use microfluid devices in not just point of care testing, but we can also use it in forensic analysis. And why would it be necessary in forensic analysis? It would be great because when we go to the crime scene, we could quickly analyze. Many times in cases when you're they're trying to profile a suspect, then sometimes the DNA will, when it comes to analyzing the DNA, just like point of care testing, it will, in the clinic, it will take days, days that you lose from trying to save somebody or rescue somebody and you won't be able with this microfluid device you can you will be able to you can take multiple since they're portable you can take them to any crime scene area and you could collect your samples and test them right there and you could start to initiate the suspect profile and you could eliminate potential suspects and one microfluid, like the coronavirus, is we're all afraid of catching it, essentially. However, with microfluid devices, we can decrease contamination, which is a one of the was a, a great benefit of it. This chart, this diagram, and this slide. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't when you look at. Don't think, oh, this is too much. It's essentially just saying that micro microfluid devices. They they're t tested. What how it works is a microfluid device essentially is looking for a biomarker. A biomarker is just it is an indicator of the state of disease. So it can be a pro pro it can basically it searches. It's kinda of like going to online and searching for something. However, you're searching the DNA for a specific protein or fragment of a protein, such as like these biomarkers that are found in specific disease like correctional carcinoma or cancer or the coronavirus even has a biomarker that can be t that can be tested and the LOD is just a limited tech detection um, the basically it's the sample so it only requires that small amount so it's the one of the most great things about microfluid devices is that it doesn't take a lot of DNA. So like in the crime scene, sometimes DNA is so small. There are some, we don't, we have less of the samples. So it's hard to use it multiple times. 
But with these devices, we can also 